Hey, I'm Nick in the States, and today, let's talk about Bigsby's. You know, there's a bunch of different tremolos out there, or vibratos, or however you want to call it, from Fender's um, you know, synchronized tremolo that they came out with, all the way through the Floyd Roses, the Kalers, um, kind of the various knockoffs. Um, and even today, there's things like uh, GFS's X-Trems, um, and the Less Trem, and a bunch of other ones. So. For, for me, the, you know, the classic look, the right looking thing is, you know, a nice, real, legit uh, Bigsby. Um, and I have the, the pleasure of actually having them on what turns out to be seven guitars in various states of, of completion. Um, so, you know, I'm a big fan and, and you see a lot of questions on forums and whatnot on, on which Bigsby's for which application and which is which. So, it seemed like a good idea and an excuse on my mental health day today to procrastinate from shoveling my roof and make another video! So, voila! Um, so, what I want to do first is kind of, you know, just... That's your basic Bigsby, and this is actually on a, on a Chinese-made Les Ball copy. Um, different Bigsby's have a, a single bar or a two bar. Some of them have screw to the top, some of them just anchor to the heel. Um, so let's quickly just go through the line and uh, I can share some of my experience with them. Let's start off with this little guy. If you look at nice and close, this is a Bigsby B3. And what these are is they're a short single bar. Um, Bigsby originally designed for Gretsch solid body guitars in the 50s uh, and early 60s. Um, they do mount to the top with four screws um, with a pass through so that you can still have your strap pin there. And it was short so that you could use it on um, a variety of guitars so that if this bridge was closer to it, you'd still work. Whereas the larger B7 um, with the two bars, like a Les Paul one, on some guitars would get cramped. Um, on this one, it just kind of completes the melody maker slash um, kind of Gretsch crossover with the mini Retrotron hums from GH GFS, the Hot Liverpools, and going over the wraparound bridge. Um, so that nice, simple, four bolt, no bolts to the top. Um, there are a couple holes to plug in the bottom if you ever switch it out, but a nice and easy one. And you'll see these a lot on 125, 225 Gibsons. Um, you'll sometimes see them on uh, some of the random ones. I think I've seen them on a Rick before, which was kind of strange, but they're working ones where the bridge tends to be a little closer to the end of the guitar. Whereas on a Les Paul, you've got room to put the larger one. What I like about this, Don't know if that's coming up in the mic, but it's a very mellow one where some of the other Bigsby's kind of step into it more. This one really just invites you to delicately play it and it's super forgiving. Um, this is a Mel Melody Maker Special 2014 that I'm in the process of building out. Um, and by later today, she'll have pots and be fully wired up. But I think from as, as a look um, and as, you know, just an overall guitar, it really works with it. Um, and I mean, Bigsby's your thing or they're not. It's kind of a, a personal preference. And for me, I just like the way they look. Next is my representation of a Bigsby B5. And this is actually a B50, which is a good point to introduce the three varieties of Bigsby's available usually in each grade. So the B3 back there was the USA made um, one. Um, this is a B50. And you can always tell those because they're evidenced by the licensed by underneath Bigsby. And these are made in Korea. Um, they're a little bit cheaper, but really not much. Just buy the US ones I wish I had on this. Um, the, uh, the nice thing about this is the horseshoe. It's designed for flat top guitars. Um, and uh, it's very popular on SGs and Telecasters. Um, this happens to be a, uh, a custom built carved project body that I uh, came out of a bar in Florida, actually, the mahogany with a book match top. But the Bigsby was a perfect thing to sit there because it has an uneven round of the heel and I couldn't put a, a B7 on it or something like that. Um, but there's that. And this one you'll see has a main bar that your string goes around and then comes under this retaining bar and then we'll go over your bridge and all the way up. So that's your B50, same as a B5. Um, what they also have is, I'm not sure if they have it in the B5, but in the B7 range is also a B700. And instead of being the Korean one, that's the Chinese one. And we'll get to that at the end. So you have your single digits, a USA one, two digits, your Korean one, 
and the three digit one is your made in China one if it's available. Um, so there's this one. Next is the guitar that if you saw some of my videos in the last couple weeks, it's my uh, 5080 S225. And this has a Bigsby B6 on it. And the B6 is really designed to be a long single bar. Uh, and it won a lot of the jazz guitars of the era. Um, and this includes um, the ES-175 Gibsons, um, L5s that had them, ES-5s, um, some of the Gretsch um, hollow bodies. This is typically the one, or it's a branded G Gretsch one, uh, which is a B6C. Um, and uh, so that's really what it's there for. You, what you don't see is the fact that you can put these on slim guitars too. And you'll see that it's just because it has a longer, you know, the, the end pin, or sorry, where it screws to the guitar through three screws to the end, is a little bit longer, so you have to have it come up a little off of the body. What I've also seen people do is take this off and it just punches out and put the B3 or B7 um, end pin on it. And that way you can have a smaller one and this kind of leans more to the edge of the body. But this is a very nice one going over a tunematic bridge. And I don't really have, as long as your nuts are set up well, <laughs> um, as long as you have a nut that's not too tight on the, uh, on the strings, I find that um, they stay in tune pretty well, but I'm not killing it. It's really just for flourishes. Um, flourishes like that. So, them's B, the B6. Here you see the B6 on its more natural environment. Um, this is my Epiphone Zephyr Blues Deluxe. Um, available in gold as well on this with plenty of fingerprints on it. But here's your big boy, big body guitar with the Bigsby that you really, you know, is more the classic expectation of, of what one of these long single arm guys go. But very, it's out of tune though. Very smooth, smooth tones to it. Um, and it just, it just looks pretty. You have a boring trapeze tail piece on there, or you could have one of these. Now, most people will tell you that the B7 is, you know, most commonly seen on a Les Paul. But also, it works very well on your semi-hollow slim guys, like an ES-135, an ES-335, or even the 339s, um, and, uh, and the like, or even the 139. Um, unlike the others, it bolts to the top, um, as well as to the end with a four, four pin or four screws. You also see it's not too deep, so you can put it on a variety of thicknesses of guitars. Um, but same basic style, um, comes right over, looks quite nice. Um, I find that it's got more of an attack. Um, that you, uh, then the single ones, and it needs a little bit more, you know, heft into it. I think some of that's a factor of having that retaining bar there. Um, but once again, it takes this guitar and, and really kind of brightens it up and makes it a little happy. This is a, I think a late uh, 1990s ES-135 and kind of a blue burst. Um, this is the first guitar that I ever spent a whole lot of money on that I probably didn't have at the time. And so she's near and dear to me, but she's, uh, She's a really nice little player, and I think the Bigsby really brings out a lot of the character in it. Can't talk about Bigsby's without saying a Les Paul with an American Bigsby. Um, this is my Les Paul Studio Gold Top 60s tribute, and what it, this has is it has a Bigsby B7 on it, uh, American-made Bigsby, and it really turned this guitar from being slightly depressing looking to really just a prettier, even happier looking thing, and it's. A gold top of the Bigs Beyond it is probably my favorite Les Paul. Um, right up there with a black beauty with a gold Bigs Beyond it and three gold uh, covered humbuckers. But what this guy, if you look closely, this used to have a stop tail piece. And what we've used here is a uh, Vibramate. And it's a company that makes it. And what happens is the Bigsby mounts to a plate here and a plate here underneath. If you see, there's a plate underneath. And if you look up top, there's a plate underneath. And this plate screws into your um, stop tail holes, 
and that way the screws just go into it. So there's no harm to the top of the guitar or the end because it's the jack pin that actually holds it in place on the end of the guitar. And it really makes it a very easy way to upgrade a guitar whether you like it without driving the value down. Um, it's a funny thing, you know, Bigsby's aren't cheap, about 200 bucks, but you can find them for 100, this, a B7, about 200 bucks. You can find them for, you know, 120, 130 if you really hunt. Um, but if you take and fill the holes on a Les Paul and mount it to the top of the Les Paul standard that you just bought for $2,000 and you go to sell it, it's actually harder to sell because fewer people like it. So this way you can have your Bigsby, take it off, put the stop tail back on and sell it, and then go buy a, you know, the next rung up the Les Paul ladder or a different color or whatnot and put it right back on with no real work. This went on this guitar in 15 minutes, um, which is great. Restring it, have it, have a go at it. Um, Bigsby's are a little annoying because of how the strings go. You basically have to slip the end over a rod here, come up and over, down and under and around, keeping tension on it so it doesn't fall off the back, and then winding it at the top. There's a thing called a, um, a Vibramate sells one. It's a Bigsby string spoiler. I forget what it's called, but it mounts to here, and you can actually just slip them in on the, on the backside. It makes it a lot easier to string up a Bigsby guitar. I don't own any of those. Um, because I'm a sucker for punishment, I guess. But, I mean, come on, it's just a good looking thing. So this is the B7, very common on all Les Pauls, 335s, 135s, um, a lot of other guitars. But really the big requirement is the distance from the end of the guitar to the bridge. Um, and if you, if I'll flash on the screen right now, ha, huh, if you don't have that much distance, it's not gonna work on your guitar. Um, I wanted to put a bigger one on a Telecaster and I realized that the bridge on a Telecaster is so close to the end of the guitar you can't even put the shorty on. There's actually people that'll cut them down even shorter and put them on there if they don't want to use the horseshoe. Um, so, um, you know, everyone's inventing ways to get them to work on there, but there's a Bigsby for each, for each uh, job out there. So that's this guy. Um, and there's also a B70, which is a uh, made in Korea version. Um, they, it's a good point to note is if you want to use a Vibramate, Vibramate only works with the single digits. Um, so there's a Vibramate for the B5 so that you can put it say on an SG, screws in the, the, the holes, horseshoe goes on there and it's wonderful. For like a Les Paul size guitar, um, there's a Vibramate for that, only uses the American B7. Um, the good thing is they include screws for both import and domestic um, tailpieces. So if it's an Epiphone or a Gibson, works on both. This actually was on an Epiphone Les Paul Custom for a while before it got on this guy. Last but certainly not least is China Blue. And China Blue has what's now called a Bigsby B700. And the 700 is a made in China knockoff um, that kind of looks the part. Comes with like almost a sticker Bigsby where it's not actually cast into it. Um, but looks all right. And I think on this guitar, which is just so pretty, um, it, uh, it really looks well. It's a piece of shit. <laughs> Pardon my French. Um, it came with an initially the spring, so you can get different springs for your Bigsby's that will then raise the arm or lower the arm, depending on how you want it, and kind of give you an idea of what the different types of trims are or different types of attacks that you'll need. Um, this bad boy came with a spring that was like twice as long as any of my other Bigsby springs. Um, the, so it was just miserable. I swapped this out. This actually has the spring from the Bigsby B50 in it. It made it a little bit easier, but unlike the other ones, after returning from using the trem, it has two positions it likes to return to. One of which is happily in tune, and the other which, sadly, is not in tune. Um, so it's really just a piece of crap. Um, it's on my list. This guitar is about to get a bunch of love to it with a, a new rewiring and um, the reason why I got a Bigsby on anyway was A, to see how these were, and B, I would now won't have to fill the dowels, fill the holes of a tailpiece with dowels when I put a, a good Bigsby on this guy. Um, I may use this though as an opportunity to try out GFX, GFS's X-Trem, which is very much a Bigsby knockoff, but I think it's one of the better made ones that I've seen, and they're about $50. So, might be worth putting on this guy, seeing as, as she's just a knockoff anyway, and has kind of a sloppy shape, so why not do something different with her? Um, so that'd be that. Um, there are a lot of, I don't know, for me, 
you know, for me, uh, Bigsby is my preferred tram. I despise, personally, Floyd Roses because I'm too mentally challenged to, <laughs> to string them up and to maintain them. I know they work great a lot of the time, but, like, I, I just, I can't take them. Um, and these just have kind of a classical look. So, there's your Bigsby's. Uh, different ones for different, different gigs. And uh, hopefully this is useful for people that are looking into this kind of stuff. And, and um, yeah, with that, one last thing. I got a microphone because I apologize. I noticed in my last five or six project videos, you could hear my fish tank, my furnace, all sorts of other crap if you listen to this with headphones. And I apologize. That sucks. So I, uh, I ran out and got one of these mics that hopefully does a better job of kind of focusing where the audio picks up. Um, but with that... I've been Nick in the States and obviously I have issues. Thanks for coming by.